Hi, the topic is breadth first search and depth first search. In this video, I'll cover these two traversal methods by taking various examples. Breadth first search and depth first search are graph traversal methods. So we'll understand quickly the difference between them through this a small example. Then afterward, I'll take another example and I will explain you in detail. Now, for quick understanding, I have taken a simple graph. Actually, it's a tree, but a tree is also a graph. So let us see. So for traversal, both of these traversal, we have to know these two terms. Now for understanding these uh, traversals, we should know two terms. One is visiting a vertex means going on a particular vertex. Second term is exploration of vertex. Exploration means if I am on some particular vertex, then visiting all its adjacent vertices is called as exploration. So based on these two terms, we can understand traversals. So first I will explain you breadth first search. See, I'm selecting vertex one as the starting vertex to find out breadth first search. You can select any vertex as a starting vertex. Now vertex one, I will visit the vertex one. Now. Once the vertex is visited, this vertex I will start exploring, means I will visit all adjacent vertices. So who are those? 5, 4 and 2. In which order I can visit? I can visit them in any order. So okay, I will take 2 first, then 4, then 5. Next. I should select the next vertex for exploration. So these are already visited vertices. After one I have visited 2, 4, 5. Then I should explore. Explore what? I will explore 2. So who are adjacent to 2? Adjacent to 2 are 7, 6, 3. In which order you can take? You can take them in any order. 7, then 3, then 6. In any order you can take. That's all. All the vertices are visited and there is no vertex remaining for exploration. This is breadth first search. Now let us look at depth first search. I'll start from vertex 1. Then from 1, I have to start its exploration. So I'll go to vertex 2. 2. Now who are other adjacent vertices 4 and 5? No, don't visit them. You have reached a new vertex, so you start exploring that vertex. Okay, I'll start exploring 2. Then who are adjacent to this 7, 6 and 3? So I want to go to 3. Okay, go to 3. Then. Shall I visit 6 and 7 also? No, this is depth first search. Start exploring 3. So if I start exploring 3, there is nothing connected to 3. Okay, so it means 3 is completely explored. Then come back and then continue the exploration of 2. So who are there? 6. Explore 6, nothing is there. Come back, go to 7. Explore 7, visit 7, explore 7, there is nothing. So come back to 1 now and continue the exploration of 1. Who are adjacent to it? 4, visit 4 and explore 4. There is nothing, come back. Then go to 5, 5. Now in this way, all are explored. So the traversals are different. Results are different. So in breadth first search, we will explore a vertex, then we go to the next vertex for exploration. But in depth first search, once we ex started exploring, once we visited a new vertex, we will suspend this vertex and start its exploration. So from one, we got two. So we started exploring two. Then from two, we went on three. So we'll start exploring three like this. So in depth first search approach is different and breadth first search approach is different. So I'll take one more example and explain you what is the difference between breadth first search and depth first search with a simple example. One more example. Let us find breadth first search. Actually, this is a binary tree. Tree is also a graph. So let us perform breadth first search and see. So as per binary tree, I will perform level order. One, then two, three, then four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. This is breadth first search. Means breadth first search is just like a level order on a binary tree. Then, what is a depth first search? Visit 1. Okay. Explore 1. So, we got 2. So, stop exploring 1 and start exploring 2. So, 4. Stop exploring 2 and continue exploration of 4. There is nothing. 
So go back and come to 5. Now nothing is remaining. So go back to 1 and come on this side. Then 6. Then go back and 7. So this is like pre-order. So breadth first search is just like level order. And depth first search is just like pre-order traversal of a graph. I have taken a bigger graph now. We will learn about breadth first search and depth first search in detail. First of all, breadth first search. For performing breadth first search, I will take one data structure that is Q. I have taken a Q. Now I'll explain you initial step. Then I will explain you repeating step. So what is the initial step? Start exploration from any one of the vertex. So which vertex I should select as a starting vertex for breadth first search? You can select any vertex you like. So I'll select vertex 1. So in the answer you show it 1. In the graph you draw here again. Then add it to Q. This is the first step, initial step. Now we will perform repeating steps. So what are those repeating steps? Take out a vertex from Q and start exploring it. So vertex 1, who are adjacent to 1, 4 and 2. So explore them. So first I want to visit 4. Okay, add it to result and also add it to Q. Next I want to go to 2. Okay, add it to result and also add it to Q. Now 1 is completely explored. There is no adjacent vertex remaining for vertex 1. This is first iteration completed. Now repeat the procedure. What to do next? Select next vertex for exploration from Q. That is 4. Start exploring 4. So who is adjacent to 4? 3. So I am drawing it like a tree here. So 3 is adjacent. So add it to Q. Any other adjacent for 4? Nothing is adjacent for 4. So 4 is completely explored. Now select next vertex for exploration. That is 2. Who are adjacent to 2? 3, 5, 7, 8. I can visit them in any order. If I check 3, it's already explored. So then I will prefer going on 5 first. So 5, 5. Next I want to go on 8. Okay, 8. So 8 and 8. Next I will go on 7. So 7 and add 7 here. Now 2 is completely explored. Now select next vertex for exploration. Who is that? 3. Is there any adjacent vertices for 3? Yes. 2, 8, 9 and 10. So 2 is already visited. So first I will take 10, 10, 10. And then 9, 9, add it to Q. Complete it. 3 is completely explored. Now select next vertex for exploration. 5. Anybody adjacent to 5? Yes. 8 and 7 and 6. So 8 already visited. 7 already visited, 6, this is 6, so 6 and 6, 5 is completely explored. Select the next vertex for exploration, 8, who is adjacent to 8, 2 and 7, 2 actually we came from there, 7, draw a dotted line, so vertex which is already visited, we are drawing a dotted line. Then next vertex for exploration, 7. 7 is already explored. So is there anything remaining for 7? No. 10. There is nothing nearer to 10. No, nothing adjacent to 10. There is nothing adjacent to 9. And there is nothing adjacent to 6. So that's all. This is breadth first search completed. And the tree that we got here is breadth first search spanning tree. Dotted edges that we got here, they are called as cross edges. They are called as cross edges. Uh, let us see what are the things that we have learned. First thing is you can start breadth first search from any vertex you like. First point. Second thing is when you are exploring any vertex one, then you can visit the adjacent vertices in any order you like. This was the second thing. Then both our leniency is given, freedom is given to select any vertex. Then what is the rule here? Rule is when you are selecting a vertex for exploration, you must visit all its adjacent vertices. 
then only you should go to next vertex for exploration. So it, if I am exploring one, then I should ex visit four as well as two, then only I should select four for exploration. This is the rule. The next thing is, last thing is, you should select the next vertex for exploration from a queue only. So queue and exploration should be completely done. These are the two important points about breadth first search. Follow this one, then you can get many answers. I will write few more valid breadth first searches here. First one, I'll start from vertex one, then I'll explore the adjacent vertices. So first I'll explore two, then four. Then I have to start exploring two because I have visited two first. So who are adjacent to two? So I will take eight, then five, then seven, then three. These are adjacent to two. All these are adjacent to two. Then I should explore which one? Four. So who are adjacent to four? Three. So already over. Then explore eight. Who is adjacent to eight? Five and seven both are visited. Now explore seven. So this is six. Now explore three. So 10 and nine. So 10 and 9. This is one also. This one is also a valid answer. Then one more. I'll start exploration from 5. From 5, who are adjacent to 8, 7 and 6? Now explore 2. Who are adjacent to 2? 3 and 1. Now explore 8. 7 is already visited. 7, everything is visited. 6. Uh, nothing is there so everything is visited explore 3 so 9 and 10 and 4 so for 3 9 10 and 4 I have visited now explore 1 nothing is remaining 9 10 4 not all are visited so this is also valid so like this you can start from any vertex and you can visit the adjacent in any order so you can form numerous number of valid breadth first search Next, we will see depth first search. Now, next is depth first search. For this, I will take a stack. Stack is a data structure used here. Let us start. I can start the traversal from any vertex I like. So, I want to start from vertex 1. So, 1 is visited. This is the initial step. Now, the repeating step. What I have to do every time? As this new vertex is visited, start exploring it. So who are adjacent to that 4 and 2? So visit 4, 4, 4. Now, the rule in depth first search is, once you have visited one vertex, still one more is remaining. Leave that. We will see it afterwards. First, you start exploring 4. So this is the rule. So once you have reached a new vertex, start exploring that new vertex. What about that one? Suspend it and keep it in the step that we can explore it later. Now start exploring four. So from four, I can go on three. So okay, go to three, three is visited. Now what to do? Suspend four and start exploring three. From three, I can go on 10. So 10. Suspend three, start exploring 10. There is no adjacent vertex of 10. So go back to 3. So how to know I, where I have to go back? This stack will give me their value. So this 3. Continue exploring 3. So I can go on 9, 9. And again suspend 3 and start exploring 9. From 9 I cannot go anywhere. Then go back to 3 and start exploring 3. So who is adjacent to 3? 2. So 2 is visited. Then from 2, who is adjacent? Suspend 2 and start exploring 2. So from 2, 8 is adjacent. So take 8. Now start exploring 8. So from there, I can go on 7. So suspend 8. So 7 is visited. Now we have to explore 7. From 7, I can go on 5. So 5 is newly visited. Now we have to start exploring 5. So suspend 7 and push it into the stack. Then from 5, who is adjacent? 6. So visit 6, suspend 5 and continue exploration of 6. There is nothing adjacent to 6. So go back to 5. From 5, where I can go further? So I can visit 2, which is already completed. 
right i can visit 8 which is already completed so there is nothing remaining for 5 so what happens in this way is we are going deep and deep right so in this way almost all vertices are visited only they are completely explored so 5 is completely explored go back to the previous vertex who is that 7 7 from 7 where i can go from 7 i can go on 2 which is already visited then go back to 8 from 8 nothing is remaining so from 2 where i can go i can go to 1 right then nothing is remaining so go back to 4 from 4 i cannot go anywhere from 3 1 i cannot visit anywhere so that's all right so here is the defer search traversal result and this is a dfs spanning tree this is depth for search spanning tree and these edges are called as back edges so for this graph we can make a tree like and perform pre-order so this is the pre-order of this tree see 1 4 3 10 then 9 then 2 8 7 5 6 1 4 3 9 8 2 so 9 2 8 7 5 6 so this is like pre-order traversal now i will write few more valid depth for search directly looking into the graph i'll start from vertex one one this is the first one from one i'll go to two from two i'll go to eight from eight i will go to seven from seven i'll go to five then six from six i cannot go anywhere come back to five two is already completed seven also completed so what was the route i have taken so come back to seven seven is completely explored come back to eight nothing remaining come back to two so from two i'll go to three then nine nothing is there come back and go to ten then go back to three and go to four then one is already explored so return back to four then three then two then one finished so this is one answer then one more i'll show i'll start from vertex three first is three then i'll visit to four then one then two then five then six from six and eight cannot go anywhere come back to five come back to five and go to seven then eight right from eight i am back on two what is already over so complete go back to seven then five then come back to two then two from there i have already gone to um one one is already completed right so come back to four then come back to three so from three who are remaining ten and nine so ten then nine this is also valid so you can start from any vertex you like and you can visit any neighboring vertex but only thing is once you have visited a new vertex suspend the exploration of current vertex and start exploring new vertex that's all about the first search and breadth first search and the time complexity of both these methods is order of n n is number of vertices